Something on your mind? Not unless they were asking me for a favor. Well, there was that one time in Denerim, but those women were <laughs> not like you. Why? Is this your way of telling me you think I'm handsome? Maybe. It doesn't hurt to have a pretty girl say that, though. Beats being run through with a sword any day. So, is this the part where I get to say the same? Oh, I think so. I'll just spring it on you when it's a surprise. <laughs> Yes? Well, here I am. I knew this would come up sooner or later. I don't know how to explain, but I had a dream. In it, there was an impenetrable darkness. It was so dense, so real. And there was a noise, a terrible, ungodly noise. I stood on a peak and watched as the darkness consumed everything. And when the storm swallowed the last of the sun's light, I... I fell, and the darkness drew me in. I suppose I did. That was what the darkness was, no? When I woke, I went to the Chantry's gardens, as I always do. But that day, the rose bush in the corner had flowered. Everyone knew that bush was dead. It was grey and twisted and gnarled, the ugliest thing you ever saw, but there it was, a single beautiful rose. It was as though the maker stretched out his hand to say, even in the midst of this darkness, there is hope and beauty. Have faith. In my dream I fell, or, or maybe I jumped. I'd do anything to stop the blight. I know that we can do it. There are so many good things in the Maker's world. How can I sit by while the blight devours everything? That is why you are a Grey Warden. Come, there's a blight to stop. Oh, it's been a long day. Rest. Rest would be welcome. Yes, yes, of course. I am just a little weary. As you may have noticed, I'm no spring chicken. Thank you. You're very kind to say so. But in all honesty, I do not know how many years I have left in me. I have lived for such a long time, but there is always something else to do. And I have to keep going in order to do it. I think I will be glad when I am done. Oh, no. I'm not the sort of person that leaves things unfinished. I'll see this through, I promise. The Circle of Magi stands ready to assist, Grey Warden, as do the Templars of the Chantry. There are always areas to improve on, Grey Warden. The most useful for my talents are runes.
I bring word, sire. There are demands from the Banorn that you step down from the Regency. They are said to be gathering their forces, as are your allies. It appears it will be civil war after all, despite the Darkspawn. Pity. I also have an interesting report. There seem to be Grey Wardens who survived Ostagar. How, I don't know. But they will act against you. I have arranged for a... a solution. With your leave. The Antivan Crows send their regards. An assassin? Against Grey Wardens, we will need the very best. <laughs> <laughs> and the most expensive. Just get it done. Traveller of the Fair Lands. Are you a seeker, perchance? My packs are light, but I have a tome of strange origin. The Deus V. Eternus, rumored to be the last message to a sinful world from the Maker himself. I have uh, no idea what you're talking about, and uh, neither do these large men carrying swords. Get them! And so you return. Lovely Morrigan has at last found someone willing to dance to her tune. Such enchanting music she plays, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Which one, I wonder? What has Morrigan told you? Hmm? What little plan has she hatched this time?
That she does. The question is, do you? Ah, but it is an old, old story. One that Flemeth has heard before, and even told. Let us skip right to the ending, shall we? Do you slay the old wretch as Morrigan bids, or does the tale take a different turn? The truth, she says, as if it were nothing. No, no. Far better the lie. Far better the comfort of blankets and shadows and a mother's love. Morrigan wishes my grimoire. Take it as a trophy. Tell her I am slain. I go. Perhaps I surprise Morrigan one day. Or I may simply watch. It would be interesting to see what she does with her freedom. Enlightening, even. Would you give an old woman that? Shame. What will it be, then? It is a dance poor Flemeth knows well. Let us see if she remembers the steps. Come. She will earn what she takes. I'd have it no other way. Blight, how will you end it? Is that all? It is surrounded by an ocean of darkspawn. How will you reach it? If you reach it, how will you slay it? You say you are a Grey Warden. I have heard stories of this order. Great strategists and peerless warriors. That is what we hear of the Wardens. So far, I am not impressed.
Evidently not. It remains only to see what you are here for. I await your command. Mother's real grimoire, is it? I am glad you were able to find it after all. My thanks for retrieving it. I shall begin studying it immediately and unlock the power that it holds. the maker we need help they attack the wagon please help us follow me I'll take you to them wake up at all, as the case may be. But I see you haven't killed me yet. Ah, so I am to be interrogated. Let me save you some time. My name is Zevran. Zev to my friends. I am a member of the Antivan Crows, brought here for the sole purpose of slaying any surviving Grey Wardens, which I have failed at, sadly. A rather taciturn fellow in the capital. Logan, I think his name was. Yes, that's it.
I wasn't paid anything. The crows, however, were paid quite handsomely, or so I understand. Which does make me about as poor as a chantry mouse, come to think of it. Being an Antivan crow isn't for the ambitious, to be perfectly honest. I have no idea what his issues are with you. The usual, I imagine. You threaten his power, yes? Beyond that, no, I am not loyal to him. I was contracted to perform a service. Oh, well, that's between Loghain and the Crows, and between the Crows and myself. Isn't that what we're establishing now? I wasn't. If I had succeeded, I would have returned home and the Crows would have informed your Loghain of the results, if he didn't already know. If I had failed, I would be dead, or I should be, at least, as far as the Crows are concerned. No need to see Loghain, then. What can I say, huh? I am an eternal optimist. Although the chances of succeeding at this point seem a bit slim, don't they? <laughs> No, I don't suppose you'd find that funny, would you? Then, unless you're quite stuck on cutting my throat or something equally gruesome, perhaps you'd care to hear a proposal. Well, here's the thing. I failed to kill you, so my life is forfeit. That's how it works. If you don't kill me, the crows will. Thing is, I like living. And you obviously are the sort to give the crows pause, so let me serve you instead. To be completely honest, I was never given much of a choice regarding joining the crows. They bought me on the slave market when I was a child. I think I paid my worth back to them plus tenfold. The only way out, however, is to sign up with someone they can't touch. Even if I did kill you now, they might just kill me on principle for failing the first time. Honestly, I'd rather take my chances with you. Well, let's see. Being allowed to live would be nice, and would make me marginally more useful to you. And somewhere down the line, if you should decide that you no longer have need of me, then I go on my way. Until then, I'm yours. Is that fair? A fine plan, but I would examine your food and drink far more closely from now on, were I you. That's excellent advice for anyone. Welcome, Zivran. Having an Antivan crow join us sounds like a fine plan. Oh, you are another companion to be, then? I wasn't aware such loveliness existed amongst adventurers, surely. Or maybe not. I hereby pledge my oath of loyalty to you until such a time as you choose to release me from it. I am your man, without reservation. This I swear. I shall do it. I saw travelers coming down the road, though I scarcely believed it. Have you come to help us? So you... you don't know? Has nobody out there heard? He could be dead for all we know. Nobody's heard from the castle in days. We're under attack. Monsters come out of the castle every night and attack us until dawn. Everyone's been fighting and dying. 
Apparently everyone seems to agree that a blight is the perfect time to start killing each other. Marvellous, really. We've no army to defend us. No Arl and no king to send us help. So many are dead. And those left are terrified they're next. I should take you to Ban Tegan. He's all that's holding us together. He'll want to see you. He's just over there in the Chantry. Please, come. And who are these people with you? They are obviously not simple travelers. No, my lord. They just arrived, and I thought you would want to see them. Well done, Thomas. Greetings, friends. My name is Tegan, Ban of Rainosphere, brother to the Arl. You're a rather unusual group, to say the least. Can I ask who you are and why you've come? A Grey Warden? I thought you all died along with my nephew. At least that is what Loghain would have us believe. What, that he pulled his men in order to save them? That Caelan risked everything in the name of glory? <laughs> hardly. Loghain calls the Grey Wardens traitors, murderers of the king. I don't believe it. It is an act of a desperate man. There is a Grey Warden who goes by the name of Alistair. Does he yet live? He does? Finally, some good news amidst all the bad. Thank you. You're here to see my brother. Unfortunately, that might be a problem. Eamon is gravely ill. No one has heard from the castle in days. No guards patrol the walls, and no one has responded to my shouts. The attack started a few nights ago. Evil things surged from the castle. We drove them back, but many perished during the assault. They hit again the next night. Each night they come, with greater numbers. With Caelan dead and Loghain starting a war over the throne, no one responds to my urgent calls for help. I have a feeling tonight's assault will be the worst yet. I'm asking you, please, help us. Help Eamon. How pointless to help these villagers fight an impossible battle. One would think we had enough to contend with elsewhere. Thank you. Thank you. This means more to me than you can guess. Thomas, please tell Murdoch what transpired. Then return to your post. Yes, my lord. Now then, there is much to do before night falls. I put two men in charge of the defense outside. Murdoch, the village mayor, is outside the Chantry. Sir Perth, one of Eamon's knights, is just up the cliff at the windmill, watching the castle. You may discuss with them the preparations for the coming battle. Very well. Luck be with you, my friend. Let us pray. Blessed art thou who exists in the Maker's sight. Blessed art thou who seeks his forgiveness. Blessed art thou who seeks his return. I'm scared. I shall do it. One of the bad men comes. As you say. Soon, darling. Don't worry. Everything will be all right. Where's father? Sorry. Am I bothering you? I'll, I'll try to be more quiet. Those... those things dragged my mother away. I don't know what happened to her, but I hear her screaming all the time. Everywhere. How terrible, you poor thing. I wish there was something we could do to help. And now my brother Bevan, he, he ran off. I, I don't know where he is. I'm so scared they got him too. He said something about saving mother. He's just a little boy. He doesn't understand she's gone. Grief can make us do many things that don't make any sense, I'm afraid. If he has foolishly run off, then he is no doubt dead. You should get used to that fact. I can't believe you'd say such a thing. Have you no heart at all? Shall we comfort her with lies? 
If she is to face death, better she face it honestly. I hope he didn't try to go to the castle. Oh, that would be awful. You will. Thank you so much. Please find him. Silence, girl. Do you want the children to hear you? But night is coming. Ah, fresh. You know, we don't have the men we need. And their numbers just grow. It must have been very difficult for you and your mother, Morgan, to live always hiding from the Chantry and its hunters. Your pitying tone is as unwelcome as it is unnecessary, old woman. There was nothing difficult about, about our lives in the slightest. But surely you must have drawn notice from time to time. No matter how powerful you claim to be, you would not wish the full attention of the Chantry. Hunters did come into the wilds from time to time. They did not leave. And the interest of the Chantry was never aroused. I find that difficult to believe. I imagine you find many things difficult to believe. Your own preference for the leash you wear, for instance. There are good reasons for the world to fear mages, even despite our best intentions. Your best intentions, perhaps. Their fear concerns me not at all. I shall do it. It is begun. As you say, allow me. I could do that for you. It shall. It is begun. Go away. This isn't your home. Young man, come out this instant. I... Yes, ma'am. All right, I came out. You won't hurt me, will you? I'll go back to the Chantry if you really want. I... I can't tell you. It's a secret. You could. All right, I guess. I just... Father said I could have his sword when I grew up. It was Grandfather's, and Grandfather was a great dragon slayer. I thought, if I was brave like Grandfather, I could use his sword and kill the bad people who took Mother. In the chest, in Mother's room, Father gave me a key, but I'm not supposed to give it to anyone. You could? Maybe you could give my sister money? She said if we had money, we'd be all right, even if mother is dead. I, I guess you're right. I should help defend the village, shouldn't I? Father would have if he were here. Oh, all right, here's the key. I hope you use it to kill a lot of those bad people. I should go back to the Chantry. Good luck. It is begun.
as you say. Wonderful. Intruders. I hope you have a good reason for breaking and entering into my home. Apology accepted. The name's Dwin. Pleased to meet you. Now get out. Surviving. We have supplies to last for quite some time. And my boys and I can swing a weapon better than any of those fools out there. Thanks, but I'll take my chances in here. Everyone else can run around in the open waiting to die. Maybe. Let's hear what you've got. Hmm. You might just be able to pull that off. Fine. I'll throw in with the militia. For now. You better be out there, too, when the sun goes down. I'm not fighting for a lost cause, you hear me? It is begun. I think they made women Grey Wardens. For more reasons than you care to hear, I bet. Still, there's no reason to think Bantigan's lost his mind. We aren't gonna turn aside anyone who wants to help, though. Don't take me for being an ingrate or nothing. Name's Murdoch, mayor of what's left of the village, providing we aren't all killed and hauled off to the castle tonight. I... I hope you're right. I've been trying to hold us together, but it isn't easy. Anyhow, you're here, and they tell me you're in charge. We need what little armor and weapons we got repaired, and quickly, or half of us will be fighting without either. Owen's the only blacksmith who can do it, but the stubborn fool refuses to even talk. If we're to be ready for tonight, we'll need that crotchety bastard's help. His daughter, Valena, is one of the Alessa's maids, so he hasn't heard from her since this whole business started. He demanded we attack the castle, break down the gate, and force our way in. I said it was impossible, but he wouldn't listen. He's locked himself in the smithy now. I can't force him to do repairs. He said he'd rather die first. I'd appreciate it. If he doesn't help, he'll die like the rest of us. What good will that do anyone then? Still no sign of them coming back from the castle, Murdoch. Tell them to maintain watch. I don't want a surprise attack before the sun goes. Yes, sir. What should we do until then? Pray and hope for a miracle. We're out here. We're out here. Go away. Curse you. Leave me in peace. 
They've already taken everything out of my stores. There's nothing left. Huh? Who is that? What do you want? I've been to enough. Mm. All right, all right. Let me undo the locks. All I ask is that you don't make any trouble. Make his breath. What is that smell? It's like someone set a brewery on fire. So I let you in. You wanted to talk. Now we're talking. Mind telling me who you are? A Grey Warden, is it? <laughs> it takes all kinds. Anyhow, my name's Owen. Though you might already know that. Care to join me as I get besotted? Or is there something in particular you wanted? Why should I help Murdoch when he won't help me? Hmm? My girl, Felena, is one of the Alessa's maids and she's trapped up there in the castle, but the mayor won't send anyone for her. She's been my life since my wife passed on two years ago. Now she's dead, or soon to be. I don't care what happens to me or the village or anyone. I'm an old man. Everyone knows we aren't making it through the night. Or are you going to save us? Is that so? Hmm. Maybe it's the drink talking, but you almost sound like you believe that. Tell you what. If you want me to do repairs for Murdoch and his men, Promise me you'll go into the castle and find my daughter. Not good enough. Murdoch said the same damned thing, and I didn't believe him either. You were asking a great deal, you wretched little man. I want a promise. Promise me that you'll look for her. That you'll bring her back to me if you can. Eventually, they want to seek out the Arl and our lesser. And when they do, you go in and bring my Velena to me. We will do our best. Please believe us, friend. I'll accept that. It's something to hope for, at least. Oh, lovely. Shall we next begin rescuing kittens from trees? Right then. It seems I have some work to do relighting the forge, and I suppose. I have to find some iron. Hmm, maybe at the mill. Oh, Murdoch just better send his men here as soon as possible if I'm gonna get to all these repairs and get them done by nightfall. If you need anything done, well, just let me know. I've got a lot to do now, so you'll have to excuse me. Hey. I see you found my hiding place. I stuck some old equipment in there before Murdoch could get his hands on it. I don't think there's anything you'll need in there. But it's hard to say. I was in a bit of a rush when I filled it up. Not if I'm going to repair the equipment they have. That stuff is old, anyhow. Yeah, let me open it for you. I have the key. Allow me. I've 
could do that for you. Very well. shall be done. I shall do it. Allow me. I could do that for you. Yes, what can I do for you? I knew this time would come. I should have listened to my wife. Don't sign that paper, she said. They might pay you a few sovereigns now, but they'll be back. Blast. I'll see you on the front lines, I suppose. bothering you, I see. No, I do not. Must I? What do you believe happens to you after you die, then? No word from the Isn't it you? Standing here, you wouldn't know of the trouble down in the natural still. Yes, I yes, do yes do very it. lovely. Let us soak in Say the no vista more. before the massacre begins. Be our lips, and I will not listen to your Ooh, inauspicious chatter. Have. As you say. Flowers? For me? Oh, they smell lovely. And there's something so familiar about them. These, these were my mother's flowers. She would sprinkle the dry petals amongst her clothes. Oh. They smell just like her. Thank you so much. Greetings, Grey Warden. I'm as relieved as Van Tegan is to see you here. I must admit I do not know quite how to address you. Is my lady sufficient? Very well then, my lady. I am humbly at your service. I am Sir Perth, until recently in direct service of Arl Eamon of Redcliffe. For now my charge is defending the village from these evil assaults. Would that I had chosen not to seek out the urn of sacred ashes. Perhaps I would have fended off whatever evil befell the castle. Or perhaps I would be dead. Ah oh, well, with the Grey Warden aiding our defense, perhaps all is not lost. No one told me of this. Oil, you say? How much exactly? Assuming that would hurt them. Yes, I see what you have in mind. That might be effective, if used carefully. Yes, excellent idea. I'll send some men to collect the oil. We'll use it to slow these creatures down. Have you anything else to ask me in the meantime? We have sufficient armor and weapons, but my knights are too few to stand against the monsters without assistance. Perhaps you could approach Mother Hannah in the Chantry for some holy protection against these evil creatures. Otherwise, I do not know what else you could provide beyond your own talents. We're as prepared for the onslaught as we could possibly be, all things considered. That gladdens my heart to hear it. As you wish, my lady. Make her watch over you. I shall do it.
You are a stranger amongst us, yet you still agree to defend our village in its darkest hour. We are most grateful to you. Not many in these modern days would honestly say the same. You are a woman of worth, and the Maker will smile upon you. Allow me to introduce myself. I am revered Mother Hannah, head of this Chantry, which for the moment is a place of refuge for these poor villagers. Surely this cannot be the entire village. These few are all who are left. All those who cannot defend themselves, yes. They are terrified of tonight's attack, and I fear these walls will not keep them safe. What can I do to help with your task? I have done all I can for them. I pray for them each night and seek the Maker's forgiveness for their sins before they face their deaths. What Sir Perth seeks is something that is not in my power to give. I can pray with them and give them my blessing, but Sir Perth wants me to call upon the Maker to shield them from evil. Does he not realize that it is his faith alone which must sustain him? It is faith alone which will bring the Maker's aid. Unfortunately, he seeks the Maker's protection in a far too literal sense. This is something I cannot promise nor provide. You mean you want me to let them think the Maker protects them in a real sense? I will not lie to them like that. I suppose if they believed in the Maker's power, that belief would inspire them somewhat. It, it just seems like trickery. Very well. If it keeps them alive, I will do what I must. I have a number of silver cast holy symbols. Tell Sir Perth that he can have them, and that wearing them will confer the Maker's protection. Now please, let me tend to these poor folk. I must do what I can, and I suggest you do the same. Evan said you were the one who found him. I can't possibly repay you. Evan told me about Grandfather's sword. So you have it then? I suppose it won't go to waste, at least. Use it well. If we survive, I'll gladly take it back. Thank you again for Bevin. With my mother gone, well, I'm just glad he's safe. I can't thank you enough. The Maker sent you. I just know it. Thank you again. It shall be done. Knights of Redcliffe are ready to fight at your disposal. Have you spoken to the revered mother? Has she offered anything? Must we do this? The faith that will protect these men must come from their heart, surely. If they are the same as the symbols worn by their priests, well, that would more than suffice. I will send some men to collect the amulets. Please give my regards to Mother Hannah for seeing some sense at last. As you wish, my lady. Make her watch over you.
Well, it looks like Owen's finally doing the repairs we need. The damn fool is falling over a drunk and still manages to make smithying look easy. Good enough, I say. I'll inform Bantig and the militia is ready to fight. We'll give those bastards a welcome they won't soon forget. I hope you're right. We may just be village folk, but we're going to fight like there's no tomorrow. Thanks for persuading him to come out here. He's going to be a great help. I just know it. There's not much time before sundown. Are you sure? There's still time left if you need to talk with Sir Perth or do anything else. The men's spirits are high for now. Far better than I expected, to be honest. Dwin's presence makes the men a bit more confident. It helps to know a veteran is on our side tonight. Since you convinced Owen to start repairs, we're pretty well armed now. That is a relief, let me tell you. Overall, I'd say the militia's very ready to fight. Never thought I'd say that, but there you go. Is there anything else? Are you sure? There's still time left if you need to talk with Sir Perth or do anything else. Then good luck to you. You'll need it.
dawn arrives and we survive the night. We are victorious. And though this victory came at great cost, we must remember none of us would be here were it not for the heroism of these good folk beside me. I thank you, dear lady. Truly the Maker smiled on us when he sent you here in our darkest hour. Surely these people deserve some small celebration, don't you think? There is time yet. Let us bow our heads and give honor to those who gave their lives in defense of Redcliffe. Now they walk with he who is their maker. Long may they know the peace of his love. With the maker's favor, the blow we delivered today is enough for me to enter the castle and seek out your Arl. Be wary and watch for signs of renewed attack. We shall return with news as soon as we are able. Now we've no time to waste. Meet me at the mill. We can talk further there. I shall do it. You saved us. I can't believe we're alive. And it's finally over. With mother and father both gone, I suppose they'll send us to an orphanage, maybe separated. At least we're both alive. I won't forget what you did, though. Neither of us will. Thank you. I can't take it back. If you need it, keep it. Grandfather would want it in the hands of a hero. We should leave now, I suppose. There's a wagon taking us north, and I don't want to miss it. Farewell. It shall be done. thought you like. No princesses in tall towers or knights throwing themselves at whole armies. That's not all I like. Do you want tales of the chastened wilders who dwell in the marsh? Do you want to hear of the slow deaths they inflict on their enemies? Perhaps a tale of the poisonous creatures of the wilds that lay their eggs on your skin so their young may eat you alive when hatched? Or a tale of my mother's marsh cuisine? That, in my opinion, is the most terrifying of all my tales. Uh, no. I don't want to hear about those things. Then I have no tales for you. Odd how quiet the castle looks from here. You would think there was nobody inside at all. But I shouldn't delay things further. I had a plan. To enter the castle after the village was secure. There is a secret passage here, in the mill, accessible only to my family. I had no idea what lurked in the castle, and I couldn't abandon the people of the village. What if... Maker's breath. Tigan, thank the Maker you yet live. Isolde, you're alive. How did you... What has happened? I do not have much time to explain. I slipped away from the castle as soon as I saw the battle was over, and I must return quickly. And I... need you to return with me, Tigan. Alone. What? Uh, who is this woman, Tigan? Were it not for her help, Isolde, I would not be here. I owe her my life. Pardon me, I... I would exchange pleasantries, but... considering the circumstances... Please, Isolde. We had no idea anyone was even alive within the castle. We must have some answers. I know you need more of an explanation, but I... I, I don't know what is safe to tell. Tigan, there is a terrible evil within the castle. The dead waken and, and hunt the living. 
The mage responsible was caught, but still it continues. And I think Connor is going mad. We have survived, but he won't flee the castle. He has seen so much death. You must help him, Tegan. You are his uncle. You could reason with him. I do not know what else to do. He is. He is being kept alive so far, thank the Maker. Kept alive? Kept alive by what? Something the mage unleashed. So far it allows him and Connor and myself to live. The others were not so fortunate. It killed so many and turned their bodies into walking nightmares. Once it was done with the castle, it struck the village. It wants us to live, but I do not know why. It allowed me to come for you, Tigan, because I begged, because I said Connor needed help. For Connor's sake, I promised I would return quickly and only with Tigan. Tigan, I know you could order your men to follow me when I return to the castle. I beg you not to, for Connor's sake. The king is dead, and we need my brother now more than ever. I will return to the castle with you, Isol. <gasps> Thank the Maker. Bless you, Tigan. <gasps> Bless you. I have no illusions of dealing with this evil alone. You, on the other hand, have proven quite formidable. Isolde, can you excuse us for a moment? We must confer in private before I return to the castle with you. Please do not take too long. I will be by the bridge. Here's what I propose. I go in with Isolde, and you enter the castle using the secret passage. My signet ring unlocks the door. Perhaps I will distract whatever evil is inside and increase your chances of getting in unnoticed. What do you say? I wish I knew. I don't know any more about this evil force than Isolde seems to. Sir Perth and his men can watch for danger at the castle entrance. If you can open the gates from within, they can move in and help you. I don't think there's anyone else who can help you. If you choose not to go, then it's up to me to do what I can. Here is my signet ring. It will open the lock on the door in the mill. Whatever you do, Eamon is the priority here. If you have to, just get him out of there. Isolde, me, and anyone else, we are expendable. You're a good woman. The Maker smiled on me indeed when he sent you to Redcliffe. So we are just going to send him with that woman? It seems so dangerous. But I can delay no longer. Allow me to bid you farewell. And good luck. Anyone alive out there? Wait, you don't look like the Arlesser's guards. Are you from outside the castle? My name is Jowan. I'm a mage Lady Isolde hired to tutor her son Connor. Until they uh, threw me into the dungeon here. No, I. I poisoned Al Eamon, but that's all I did. I... I know it looks suspicious, but I'm not responsible for the creatures and the killings in the castle. 
I was already imprisoned when all that began. At first, Lady Isolde came here with her men, demanding that I reverse what I'd done. I thought she meant my poisoning of the Arl. That's the first I heard about the walking corpses. She thought I'd summoned a demon to torment her family and destroy Redcliffe. She had me tortured. There was nothing I could do or say that would appease her. So they left me to rot. I was instructed to by Terran Loghain. I was told that Arl Aemon was a threat to Ferelden, that if I dealt with him, Loghain would settle matters with the Circle. You see, I'm a Malifica, a blood mage. You, a blood mage? Truly? I would never have guessed. Ah, I thought you looked familiar. I had thought you dead, hunted down by the Templars. I guess you might have been told that. I was in hiding when I was caught. But instead of killing me, Loghain made me an offer. But he's abandoned me here, hasn't he? Everything's fallen apart and I'm responsible! I have to make it right somehow, I have to! I'm not allowed regrets? I've made a stupid mistake at the Circle and now I've made an even greater one. I'm... not a bad person. There's no reason for you to believe me, but I'm not. I have to make up for what I've done. I have to try. Connor had started to show signs. Lady Isolde was terrified the circle of Magi would take him away for training. She sought an apostate, a mage outside the circle, to teach her son in secret so he could learn to hide his talent. Her husband had no idea. I never meant for it to end like this. I swear. Let me help you fix this. I say this boy could still be of use to us, but if not, then let him go. Why keep him prisoner here? Because he is dangerous, my dear. If not to others, then surely to himself. You betray your own kind with such words, old woman. Humanity is my kind. To play with forces beyond one's control is to invite disaster, no matter one's intentions. He wishes to redeem himself. Doesn't everyone deserve that chance? Like yourself, you mean? Everyone deserves a chance to redeem themselves in the Maker's eyes. This man, no less than any. Jowen has good intentions, but a blood mage? I... I find it difficult to trust his words. Give me a chance, please. I... well, I tried to save anyone still up there. There must be something I can do. Afterwards, I assume I'll be arrested, or executed, or whatever people like me get. I'm tired of running from the Circle. I need to account for what I've done. I'd stay and try to help if I could. Perhaps I can help deal with whatever's been unleashed here. I'm glad you think so. So what now? You're letting me out? And what then? No, I'm not leaving. I made a mistake, and I'm going to find some way to fix it. It shall be done. Very well.
I shall do it. As you say.
I'm sorry. I'm so frightened. These monsters are everywhere. My... My name's Valena. The Arlesa's maid. I, is she... All right. What happened to everyone? You know my father. I want to go back to the village. Is there a way out of here? But, but the monsters... I'll find my way. I can run fast and I know the castle. Thank you. Most. It is begun. Allow me. I could do that for you. Very well. Very well.
You have opened the gates. That is good. My men and I are eager to see our Arl again. Shall we enter the main hall together? It must be held if we are to regain control of the castle. As you wish. We will hold the gate and watch for anyone attempting to leave. Let me know if the situation changes.